Hello and welcome to Levy Handcrafts by BMW. This is Brenda Walton. So today I'm going to show you this lovely card. I'm not sure if you can see it quite well. I'll hold it up to the light, uh, to the camera. I apologize. Um, so this card was a inspiration from one of my crafting hero heroes on YouTube. Her name is Kathy Zilski. I've been following her for a while and um, I really like the card and I really needed to use some of this craft card stock, which I hadn't used before in anything. Um, so I was highly impressed with what she did. So I want to present to you how I made this card using what I have in my craft room, in my stash, and I didn't have to buy any additional things to make it. So this is the inspiration for the, today's project. This is from Kathy Bilski's channel. Um, she created this card using some things that I just don't have in my stash. So she, I believe when I watched the video, she used some dyes um, and some stencils. Uh, she used some wart dyes, um, some wart metal dyes to cut this bird sunshine out. And she did some heat embossing and um, these are and some ink blending techniques and to get the the sun sunset background. And I just don't have any of those items in my stash, but I really wanted to make this card. Um, one, um, I just wanted to see if I could um, design something close or similar to her card. And then two, um, Hey, it, it just like looked like a fun idea. So I don't think I did too bad, but um, let me take you to design space for my Cricut. So this is my interpretation of what the her cart looks like. Um, let me customize it so we can kind of dig in the details. So let me ungroup first. Make sure I ungroup these so I can just pick apart the components. So this is the craft layer. Um, this is the pop up. Mess up, Brenda. This is the palm tree. Move that out the way without messing it up. This is the print and cut layer. Uh, yeah. Um, so what I did was. Um, go in and um, select something that looks closely similar to Kathy Zilski. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I have those images. Let's go to my stuff. Images. And so this is what this looks like. So let me just say this. You have to have Cricut access um, to do this because um, uh, these are uh, Cricut access um, items. So this was the sunset and I think I flipped it in my card. Um, here's the palm tree I selected. I also found these. I didn't use these, but these would make great, uh, uh, great uh, contenders. So let me go back. How do we all canvas? I can get there. Okay. Then maybe not. Okay, let's do this. Ooh, I'm clicking on it. I'm going to cooperate. There we go. Okay, I got to go through this rigmarole again. Apologies. Yes. Okay, so well, where is the bad booger? I'll go through that. Canvas. There we go. Yeah, I figured it out. Okay. So, um, and then I saw so I picked some palm trees. I actually chose some seagulls or the birds. Um, I can't remember where I got this one from. Um, but um, I chose sunshine that worked for me and then uh, the offset layer. And I printed this offset layer 
um, three, I'm sorry, I cut it out three times. And then lastly, of course, this is my card base and I have an inside sentiment. This is not the one I'm using today, but um, I selected an inside sentiment. And um, also, let me not forget that on my mind is also a print and cut feature. Um, so yeah, that's how it all came together um, in design space. And let's just take another look at Kathy's card. Um, there we go. I think if I had to do it again, I'd make my circle a slightly larger. Um, but you know, it could be the angle that she shot uh, her her uh, screenshot from. But I think all in all, I think I did a pretty good job. So let me bring in the components. So uh, I didn't bore you with punching them all out. So here's my panel. Here is my print and cut image. There is that cover. This would actually make a beautiful shaker card. So if I had like some shaker bits um, to add to this, that would make an awesome shaker card. So that was one idea. Here's my inside sentiments. I, I used another sentiment. Here is the palm tree. Here's some uh, transfer tape. That. Here's my sunshine. We're going to show you how to do that. And am I missing anything? Yep. Some sequence. Um, and yeah, I am missing up ah, in on my mind. Okay. So let's put this card together. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, go ahead and get this on my transfer tape. Now, let me just let you guys know. I am... When I first got started crafting, um, I got vinyl and I'm not a fan of vinyl. I'm, I'm just not. And, and this is why, cause you got to do this varnishing and I'm going to varnish a little bit. So you got to do all this varnishing and, um, to get your item transferred. Oh, I'm missing one of those. That's what I'm missing. Um, and I quickly discovered once I started doing paper crafts, um, I'll do a uh, vinyl, like for just for like words or something, because I do like the look, um, but I'm not a huge vinyl fan. I don't use it a lot in my crafting, um, but I do believe this is some cricket vinyl that I had laying around. So, but and this is why I don't like when it was that. I'd make sure you varnish really, really well. So I am, the idea behind this is the vinyl is when you cut it out, it's on a backer sheet. But you've got to get the vinyl to release from the backer to the transfer tape. And then once you release it on the transfer tape, then you can put it or it's, it's final home it's going to be. So I'm ever so slightly, I'm ever so slightly just peeling back the backer. And um, I know I have a, um, I want to make sure I get the dot, the I. Oh. And so there it is adhered to the transfer tape. And then I'm just going to put it on this one first. Whoops and get that little business out the way. And the idea is, I'm just gonna eyeball it, y'all. I'm not gonna try to overthink it. I'm just gonna make sure everything kind of lines up and it looks okay. And then boom, commit it. And then, so, um, I don't know if you noticed, but when I was removing it from the back backer, um, I flipped the tape transfer tape over. See, I should have varnished this a little better. Sometimes you don't have to varnish so much. I didn't varnish this, so I mean varnished it so I want nothing else will lift lift off. And that's why you're peeling it really slowly so that if anything does lift off, you can recover and get it back on there. So this transfer tape is um reusable. So we'll set that and you can reuse it for a couple of times. So that's for that. 
I'm going to let this sit to the side because I want to do the, the hardest and most difficult part of this job was getting this lined up. So let's tackle this next. So here is, so my, the, my thought process is, is to make sure I get this in there. Like I, like I have like, I don't have a lot. I mean, I don't, I'm, how can I explain this? What I'm trying to do is make sure I don't have too much white showing like that or like that or too much showing like that. I want to get it where it can be, you know, just enough white showing all around. Now, if I don't get it centered perfectly, that's okay. But what I am going to do is go ahead and get my palm tree placed where I want it. So remember, this was, uh, these are print and cut. And this one is just the um, printed on black cardstock. So if we remember as Kathy's card, this was kind of coming up out of the side. So it was breaking this plane. And so that's what I want to do. But what I want to do is go ahead and once I'm satisfied and everything looks good and I, I'm, I'm liking where this is at, I'm just going to adhere some low tack tape to that. And then now I got my palm tree placed. Then I'm going to take some glue and trust me, when I did it the first time, I didn't do it this way. I'm going to put the glue on this area. This won't be seen. Sure. It was coming out. Got a glue jam. Yeah. Get that glue jam. So that's what I'm working with. Um, so this is my favorite craft glue. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to be kind of liberal with this glue around this area. So as I was saying earlier, this won't be seen at all. It's going to be completely hidden when you um, attach this to your card base. But I'm using a lot of glue, um, a lot more than I normally would, because I need a little bit of wiggle room. I need to be able to shift this around in, before I commit. And so, um, I just want to make sure that if I don't like what I'm seeing, I can lift it up before it sets. And I'm not worried about the, so much of this loose, you know, seeping out again. It's, the, oh my goodness, look at that. It's pretty good. Pretty darn good. Now, um, see that glue comes in handy because now I can kind of shh. Move this paper left or right up and down behind the craft card stock to get it placed kind of sort of like how I want it. And then, um, so I, I don't know if you can see it sliding ever so slightly. So I got it like I want it. I'm going to slowly remove this yellow tape and some low tack tape. So it shouldn't really pull up the damage the cardstock underneath and it's a this is some craft cardstock so it's kind of rough anyway um so you know it'll be okay so what i'm going to do now is ever so gently put a dot of glue along the tree and i'm just doing a little bit of dots not a lot and I'm going to be very careful not to put a crease in this. And I'm just going to let this naturally fold where it wants to fold back and try to, now I can give it a little nudge to get it bit. And you see, and then I'll have a lot of seepage of glue. That's that hot panel. So that's that for that. So I'm going to lay that to the side. And then, then I'm going to do the next glowing piece is this sunshine. So I didn't want to use foam squares. I tried it earlier with foam squares and I didn't like it. Um, only because it was up a little bit too high. So um, while I was cutting, I just did multiple. So I did three of them. And I'm going to glue all three and I'll end up with four and that'll give it a little bit of dimension, but not too high, um, with the foam squares. 
Um, it was just, it wasn't what the look I was going for. So let me, um, I have another one and I'll pull it out for comparison and purposes. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to leave that there. So I'm going to just start gluing these together. I might need this. So I'm just going to pick one up, turn it over, and I'm going to be very, very mindful. So on black cardstock, even though this glue dries um, fairly clear, for whatever reason on black cardstock, if you get some glue on your hands or you get some, you know, too much glue and it seeps out, it, it will dry, but it's going to leave a shiny residue. And so I am just tacking those together, turning it over, and now I'm building up my layers. Put that on there till I get the other one glued up. And then I'm just building them one on top of each other. So, yeah. Let me think about that. Okay, I was just about to make a boo-boo. Okay, but that's okay. When I thought about it, I can put it on the bottom instead of the top. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Red alert. There's a mistake, but I can do it this way. So, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, I'm assuming before they came up, I don't know, with foam squares, I don't know. I mean, I just, I've seen it. I like the look at it. Sometimes I like to use foam squares, and sometimes I don't. It just depends on the aesthetic that I'm going for. But you can choose to do either. You can choose to do none. I've done one card without it, and um, I chose to do it. This one, uh with the multiple out uh offset layer the shadow layer as we call it okay i pulled this out just in case i needed it i'm i'm, I'm gonna need it i know for um the uh whoops see see that oh uh, okay be careful brenda stop talking too much pay attention because that seeped out just a little bit so we can see that's got a little bit of dimension to it. And that's really pretty. That's 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 nice. I have to say I was um I didn't have, like I said, so she had, I do believe she had a metal die, and she had um or she stamped it and did I quite quite can't remember because I watched it a while ago, but she stamped either stamped it and this is heat embossed I, she used some gold heat embossing and um and then uh, she had that shadow layer behind it which i think when you put this all together the recipient of this card is going to be like well so you can kind of see that dimension that i was talking about is not quite flat okay for the um on my mind i just want to let you know this had, and you can see I've already inked it, so it was white, and I used some regular 110-pound um, cardstock. I didn't use, like, I, th I think it's, yeah, 110. It's not 80-pound. So this was just some white cardstock, and I used the print cut feature to get that um, little contrast. I didn't do it in gold, um, and when I look at her card, I like the white look of it brings a little bit of white to the front of the card but again personal preference you could have used um this in gold and i took my marker oh i can and then just ran a, a the black to cover the white so you wouldn't see that white outline now if that's the look you'd like you can choose to do this step or not I tend to do it because, like I said, that white looks so jarring. Um, so um, I think we are ready to put this card together. So I'm going to go ahead and add the sentiment first. And I, again, I, I've made this card twice. This is like my third time making it. And I, every time I forget 
to um, cut this down. Um, and I might end up just doing that. I probably won't adhere because it looks like it's going over the side. So I have a die. I'm going to run it through. Um, I have an A2 size die, some nested dies. I'm going to run that through and got to make this more um, smaller than the, the panel of five and a half. Um, so probably we'll use like the second one below this so that I can like have like a quarter in this. So I'm not going to mess with that right now. Um, what I am going to do is go ahead and put the panel on the earth. So if you've been watching me a while, you know, this is my preferred method of laying the panel down, um, on any card that I do. Um, I, I don't know, maybe it's the line that keeps me grounded the center line um so that's what that looks like on the other side and so i'm just going to put a liberal amount of glue now you do not have to use liquid adhesive you can use a tape printer um i do have some tape printers but i don't know i just don't use them um that's this is more like a personal preference um i do use them occasionally but i um uh, I like the little wiggle room you get with the um, the quick glue um, with the tape burner. It so it just seems like you got to get it in one shot, and lo and behold, if you make a mistake, it's it's not as forgiving as the liquid adhesive. Because as long as I don't press it down, I can always kind of lift it up and reposition it. But that went down really smoothly, and it doesn't end. It looks great, um, top and bottom. So that went out really well. Okay, next step. Um, yeah, I'm going to do. This is a trip I learned from Kathy the other day, or it was in Jennifer McGuire, somebody I was watching. Yay, that left that down there. See how now it's flat. Now, I really wanted to do that because I really wanted to get this placement of the sunshine because I think if... If the sunshine is placed pretty good, then everything else, you know, looks pretty good. And I don't want to really obscure the trees all that much. And I'm not really so much worried about this being like in the center. Um, I really want you to see my trees because, you know, hey, that's the look I was going for. And then on my mind will be whoop, right there. And that's how I'm going to lay it out. So let's get this laid first. So since I built up the layers to give it some dimension, there's no foam, again, there's no foam squares involved or foam tape. So I'm just putting some glue on it. And I'm just gonna lay it down. I've really thought about where I wanted the placement and I'm looking at the other one. And I really want it to be here. Yeah, about right there. Okay, perfect. And then let me add a liquid adhesive here on that. Get that on there. And I'm going to put that like nestle a little bit right there. I'm going to leave a little bit of space in between the sunshine and on my mind. And come up. And so that, that, that part made a beautiful part to nestle it right there. And I'm just looking to see. It looks like it's a little crooked. But if it's cricket, you know, that's the beauty of getting a handmade card. Okay, so look how quick that was. I, um, the hardest part was finding the image. And as you saw earlier in the video, I struggled to find it. Um, and I was looking for something and I tried to find something that, um, and I could have changed the colors, you know, when I found this image, but it looks exactly exactly like um uh kathy's card now i kathy's circle may have been a little bit bigger um but you can you know uh do your cutout you could do whatever you wanted at this point this is just what i chose to do and i always lose something always so i gotta go get my pickup stick so I'm just going to lay out these. Oh. 
That's I forgot my pickup stick. It's only something. As I get to the end, I think I've gotten everything together. Lord of mercy, but no, no, no. I don't. I need to get another one of these and keep them on this side of the road. Whoops, camera's shaking. A little bit too enthusiastic there. So I'm going to start placing here. Um, and these are some sequins that I purchased from All That Glitters. I really like them. They're really nice. And it, now, I, when I look back on the video, Kathy had one of those suckers hanging off the edge. I didn't, I didn't do that, but I might. I kind of just bring in some symmetry there. And again, I'm just picking them at random. Um, I think that's need. Okay, two more. So I'm throwing a medium gun in there. A medium doodad. What do you offer? Just move it over a little bit. <laughs> medium doodad. That, that, that is a medium, Brenda. Okay, so let me put that one here. And then I need one more. That's a big end. I don't need a big end. Just see right there. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Last little bit. I'm to the end of making this card. I'm so excited. Um, this was a pure okay, glue. Let me switch. I'm right hand dominant, y'all. Pick up stick. And I got a little um get the glue going my favorite exact blue whoa sorry about that I shouldn't react like that oh my god my what everything's going wrong this session oh my goodness my light where did it okay there we go <laughs> so this one's probably gonna go out over here Look like the camera moved. Ay, ay, ay. I'm tired, y'all. I've had a long day at work. And then I came in and did this filming. And so, yeah. This is in case. Yeah, so this is a pointy. Kind of sharp. So it's got a little sharp on there. And then the pickup stick has a little... Uh, wax on there and sometimes it can it'll come off and sometimes it won't oh, those look like the same so I'm not going to do the same maybe I'll do this that's little okay, maybe I this little guy is this little dude no don't poke it with that Brenda. I'm off of there um, okay, I'm confusing myself. I really, oh, yeah, yeah. One of these has got to come off. You stay there, you come off. I was trying to do a medium one. Okay, there we go. Medium size one. There we go. Okay, that's 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 what that's the trick. That's the trick. Like I said, I love this big pen. It's, it just gives me just enough glue where it doesn't. And I like the nozzle on the other one. It just comes out. I feel like I have a little bit more control with this. Perfect. I am almost done. Perfect. Oh, the gun. I'm so proud. With this card oh, okay i'm gonna have to so i'll poke myself that turned up on its side so this one's got to get a little bit of more persuasion because um it's and so i can turn it over and turn it the right way 
believe it or not, you have to lose a little bit more glue if you want your C plus to stick up the that way. I'm trying to get it to stick. Stay, baby, stay with me. Stay on the card. I need you to stay on the card so I can pick it up and let these fine folks see the final product. It's late at night. That's all I can say. <laughs> and I don't even have Penny, Penny Monster. I just looked over my site. Mm. See, this is what happens when I'm not paying attention. I was looking to see if Penny Monster joined me. So Penny Monster is my little chihuahua. She's so, uh, she's such a, a sweetheart and she's a really quiet, um, she's an older dog now. This is about 13, 14. So she'll sneak into the craft room and some, and she has a doggy bed. She's actually two doggy bed, two doggy bed beds. And she'll sneak in here and sometimes I'm just busy in, in my own little world and I don't even know that she's there. Cause she'll just be asleep and uh i'll look over and oh you've been with me for a while huh penny and then she'll turn over and want to want some some attention and then i have another dog um jc so let me, let's see if you get this one jc's a chihuahua mix i think and cole jc penny cole so I can blame my brother on that little naming convention thing. He, um, when I got Penny as a puppy, he was like, how's JC Penny doing? And when my husband and I were talking about getting another dog, I said that the next dog has to be JC because of my, my older brother, um, was always asking about, now he can really ask about JC Penny. Um, and then when we got our, other dogs or our other dogs um she's a, a lab rockwaller mix so her name is cole um nicole but we call her cole for jc penny and cole and everyone chuckles so um this is the finished product um i have a few things to tidy up and i'll just do that off camera but um it came to whoops and i sorry, came together really well i'll just remove that low tech tape and um, I am so thrilled. And um, if I see something that I can make on my Cricut that, um, that's the equivalent, I'll do that. Um, I'll you know just try to see what I can do to tinker and make it my own. Um, and so that's kind of where my head is in crafting space right now. So let me see if I can find something in design space. Cause Hey, I bought the Cricut and I can use design space cause I have access. So if I don't actually have the die, then I can do this and, um, uh, be inspired by other crafters. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Um, so please like subscribe or comment, do all three. Um, just help me grow my channel. Um, I am, so delighted with this project because this is what I envisioned when I started crafting a couple of years ago was, um, I have this Cricut, um, I just started getting into metal dyes and embossing and embossing folders and inks. But at the end of the day, how can I bring everything in my stash together and make a card or a 3D project or ink blend or stamping. That's what excites me. So hopefully this excites you too. You guys um, have a good time, um, have a good day, and then I'll see you next time. Just